Hello all, welcome to this session. In this session, I am going to answer software testing interview question 224. That is, what is root cause analysis? Let me answer. So what is root cause analysis? So before I explain this root cause analysis in the software testing terms, let me give a real world example. Okay, so that you will become comfortable and can understand this in testing terms more easily. Okay, so this happened with me, guys. So the example that I'm providing here is my own example. It happened with me. So I was driving on the highway. Okay, suddenly I noticed that uh, the level of the petrol, okay, or the fuel in my car has become low. So I was searching for a petrol bunk. So I know uh, a good lot of uh, petrol bunks on the road, but uh, when the time came and when the time I identified that this is uh, this is the time to fill up the fuel. Otherwise, uh, I I gonna stop somewhere. Okay, that that situation happened, but uh, there were no nearby good petrol bunks. So what did I do is I just went on to whatever the petrol bunk, okay, gas yeah, station you can say in other countries, okay, nearby. I went there, I stepped in, uh, I filled up some petrol, that is fuel or gas, you can say, okay? So after that, I drove for some time and I started observing some problems, okay? So you see, uh, things were good, okay? Before I filled up the petrol, uh, that gas or fuel, whatever you call, things were good. Uh, I was uh, driving my car well and everything, but uh, slowly after going a while, my car started giving me the problems. What is the problem my car was giving at the time? My car was giving some signs, okay? So uh, behind my steering, okay, there is a dashboard. In the dashboard, some kind of red color icons are coming, guys, okay? So I thought, what is the problem with the car? Okay, I thought, what is the problem with the car? So I never thought like it is a problem with fuel or gas or, okay? whatever I have filled up with. Suddenly red color marks are coming. I thought my car got heated a lot just because of that this color, this kind of red color icons are coming. So somehow I managed and uh, I went to the nearby, okay, uh, near, nearby place where they can fix my car, okay? So service, service center or whatever you can say. So uh, what kind of uh, discussion happened at that service center, okay? So they checked my car and I said, I informed them like, okay, this kind of red color icons are coming. So I don't know why it's happening. Even uh, the, the, the way I am driving the car, right? Uh, I feel somewhat different, okay? It's not, uh, is not going at the same speed. It's kind of going slow and uh, a kind of trouble feeling I was getting while driving the car, okay? Uh, apart from the signals, red color signals and on the dashboard of my car. So even the people who are, uh, who need to fix my car at the service center were saying that, okay, sir, uh, do one thing simply, uh, plug off that uh, signal, okay? Whatever the red color symbols are coming, right? Just turn it off so that it, everything will be okay, they are saying. But do you think if I just turn off, uh, if, I, uh, if I inform them to just do the same thing, whatever they are suggesting me the solution, is it the right solution? Did they identify the actual problem of my car? No, right? So if they have just turned that uh, signal that my car is giving to me, okay, indirectly, if I just turn it off, but the actual problem will be solved? No, still the same petrol is there in my car. I was not aware of that. So I didn't uh, take any, you know, right? I didn't ask them to turn it off and all. I, I thought like, okay, uh, let's go home and then uh, let's, let's come tomorrow and see what's the problem and all. So I didn't uh, get it repaired. I just uh, didn't ask them to turn it off for now. Okay, because I was doubtful somewhere like uh, this may not be the actual problem of my car. Okay, there is something going wrong with my car, I thought. So uh, I went home. Okay, the next day when I started again, the same problem. So while I was driving, suddenly I got a thought. What if uh, this is the reason where I stopped at a, a wrong petrol bunk, where the one who has filled the fuel or gas or petrol into my car has put some 
wrong thing right the quality was not good and all maybe that was the reason i thought somehow i managed and uh, next uh, you see without getting it repaired i went to next petrol bank and uh, filled uh, in a proper petrol bank i went and then filled up the car with proper petrol and then suddenly my car started working smoothly so what is the root cause petrol okay that wrong fuel or gas or petrol that got filled up in my car was the actual problem of my car it's not the signals that car is giving is a problem okay the service center guys were saying that that red color symbols are signals are the problem some sometimes happens where car will give you wrong signals you have just have to turn it off and use the car but my signals were right the car is giving right signals to me it was clearly stating that the whatever the petrol you have poured into the car is not good okay that is the root cause but we were unable to identify the root cause what will happen if you don't identify the root cause properly at some point of time you have to face the problems right so you got a clear idea right with the real world example that i have given here before i started this uh, in testing terms explanation okay so root cause analysis is all about identifying the actual cause of the problem okay whatever the visible problem problems will be visible guys but they may not be the actual problems the problems that are visible are caused by some other problems which are in the background okay which we need to identify that is what is root cause analysis all about identify such underlying problems which are causing this upper level problems or visible problems is root cause analysis same same thing happens uh, with a lot of patients when they go to doctor right okay their symptoms will be something but why the symptoms are coming can the doctor identify doctor can say that uh, it may be a fever it may be a something it may be a something but uh, how to find the root cause in case of doctor and patient example how to find the root cause doctor will simply write a diagnostic okay he will ask you to go and go to a nearby diagnostic center and do this and this test then i can say after going and finding out okay okay you are getting this leg pain because your d vitamin has gone down okay or your b12 is gone down okay so like that so underlying root cause we need to find it okay that is called as root cause analysis i gave many examples already so now you can easily understand what is root cause analysis finding the actual underlying cause of the problem in a systematic manner to eliminate the problem we need to find the underlying problem only the visible problem or symptom if you solve for now if you took a fever tablet it doesn't mean that uh, the whatever the thing that is causing fever in your body will not go away right so like that guys okay we have to eliminate the actual problem actual underlying problem we need to identify and eliminate then only the problem will be solved same thing will happen in software testing guys okay we find some defects in the software okay we find some defects in the software and a developer will do some small fixes but if there is some underlying problem which is causing the defect the developer has fixed okay without uh, with, without worrying about that underlying problem if the developer has fixed the problem do you think the defect will come again yes it will come again it will reproduce again at later point of time and also in difficult times sometimes what happens before release you got a problem you didn't do the root cause analysis simple uh, you just reported the problem developer has fixed it you thought it is fixed and the software got released into the market now it is in the production life everyone is using now again the same problem is coming you got shocked you got shocked right why you got shocked already i reported the defect the developer has fixed the problem why the problem is coming again in the production you see how difficult how difficult the situations are right so even after you identify the problem also you are getting the problem in the production me the problem there is you identify the problem but you didn't do the root cause analysis you didn't find the actual cause of the problem at the time of finding the problem if you have identified the actual reason or actual underlying cause of the problem and got it fixed by the developer in a proper manner then later in the critical times like after the software gets released into the market you would not have faced the problem right so such kind of importance the root cause analysis has okay that is the reason root cause analysis has to be done so causes of problem generally why these kind of problems come what will be the underlying causes of the problem generally lot of reasons guys requirements 
which are not detailed okay not undetailed requirements or there are some errors in the program okay which are causing the problem or there is a communication gap or problem uh, because of which the problems have a this is a root cause and because of the defects are coming okay if you are not addressing this one what is the use of fixing the defects which are coming on the top work time pressure due to the work time pressure right okay not much time is there for testing and all you missed some defects and all okay you are testing in some incorrect environment and uh, stating that everything is working fine okay that may be the underlying cause sometimes and many other examples guys these are few examples only okay causes of underlying problems that as part of root cause analysis we need to identify are some examples are this one so how to perform root cause analysis so far you understood what is the importance of root cause analysis and with examples and everything it is clear but what are the steps we have to perform while performing the root cause analysis first we have to find out what what is the problem we have to understand what is the problem you have to first understand the problem right which problem that is coming then next next thing you have to ask yourself is when the problem has come at what time you know under what circumstances the problem has occurred you need to find out that is second step third step is what is the actual cause of the problem what is the underlying thing that is causing this problem is something you have to think guys okay you have to think behind the defect and try to figure out is this a problem direct problem or is there anything that is causing this problem okay with experience software testers will get that anyhow then finally how then what to do okay this is the solution thing guys okay how is what to do so that problem won't get repeated again for you okay you see if you if you if you treat the underlying problem what happens if you treat the underlying problem the problem will not be repeated again right after the software got released into the market the problem will not come the defect will not come okay so what to do so that actual problem is solved and the uh, the visible problem is not repeated okay like that okay hope you are able to correlate because i gave a lot of examples now you can understand all these things easily okay there are some techniques uh, followed in the industry guys uh, so we call that as fishbone analysis technique and uh, the five the five eyes technique these are some techniques uh, uh, which are generally used while performing the root cause analysis to identify the underlying problems i don't want to dig deep there but uh, consequences i already told you guys okay what are the consequences of not performing rca you are simply reporting the defects and getting them fixed by the defects and if you are as software testers if you are not performing the root cause analysis or not identifying the actual reason or actual cause or actual underlying thing that is causing the problem what happens the problem will be repeated in the next build or sometimes if you are if your luck or situation is bad the problem may directly come in the live environment that is a production environment then everyone will be in troubled state okay so it's better to do root cause analysis for every defect that we report okay so this is what is root cause analysis so hope guys you got the answer for what is root cause analysis in this session so that's all for this session in the next session i am going to answer another software testing interview question for you till then see you bye bye